Hi, I'm Mark Randusky. I'm the GeForce Product Sales Manager for Gorbel, and we recently made a change uh, to put all f units, when I say all units, that means GeForce, Easy Arms, and G-Jibs, we decided to put float mode on all units as standard. Now, it used to be that you could have the option to choose float mode or not choose float mode, and we added, we went ahead and added the float mode as standard, and there's some good reason for that. Um, one of the things that we used to have a tough time doing uh, was seeing the actual load for what it was. And the reason we, did, we had that trouble is because we would use motor current as an indicator of load. Now the problem is you have bearings, gear reducers, other frictional and inertial forces that actually kind of cloud up that, that motor current and you don't get a good picture of what that load looks like at the end of your hook. So what we've done now is by adding the load sensor that goes along with float mode, we get a very clear picture, a very accurate picture of the weight of the load. And that's, that's allowed us to do some really great things like tighten up our uh, overload sensing, uh, giving you user settable overload limits, uh, anything that's got to do with our anti-drop feature. Uh, that, that allows you to take and tie into your tooling and not drop a load in the air. We used to require a difference of about 20 pounds of, of load weight uh, between the tooling and the load uh, to be able to differentiate between the two. Now we can do that to up to about five pounds. And anything else that goes along with that, including the weight readout that's on the LCD, becomes much more accurate. So what I'd like to do is uh, show you the, the, to how to program one of the most asked for features that uh, we've seen over the years, and that is user settable overload limits. And that's really the biggest feature that comes along with float mode. Uh, now when you add float mode, uh, those, for those of you who don't, who don't know what float mode is, what that is, there's two modes of operation. You have the handle mode, and then you have float mode. Float mode is the mode that allows you to press this button and have this become weightless. So I can take this roll here now and move up and down with just a little bit of upward or downward force. So if I needed to put this uh, chuck or this uh, roll on a chuck or a spindle, I could do that with just a little upward or downward force with my fingers, okay? So that's what float mode is for those of you who may not know. Now, what I'm gonna do is show you the user settable overload limit that goes along with that. So along with float mode comes the ability to do um, the user settable overload. Again, you'll see you get the weight readout as a standard feature that used to be require float mode to get that. You couldn't get that, you could not get that weight readout with only, uh, with, no, with a no float mode option. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here right now, uh, the G-Force would normally come so that the user settable, or the, uh, the overload is set at full capacity. So this is a, a 165, 165 pound G-Force we've got hanging, uh, or this tool is hanging from. Now what would happen is, uh, in normal conditions and with a G-Force, it would lift all the way up to 165 pounds plus some uh, extra buffer that would be between maybe 10 and 15 percent. And, and because we used to use motor current, that could actually be a little higher. Now it's much more accurate, even if you don't tame that down a little bit. But we've given you the ability, in addition to giving you a more accurate view of that load weight and setting the overload uh, by default, we've given you the ability to, to now set that at a lower level. So the reason you may want to do that is, say you're going to put this roll onto a spindle, and you don't want to, you don't want to accidentally go upward with too much force and damage the spindle or damage the, the core of this, of this roll. What we could do is I can come in here, and what I'll do is I'll show you how you go in here and program this now. Now what I'll do is come into the LCD. Okay. So right now we're going to show you how you set the overload limit. To get into any program mode, you press the menu button here. Wait till it says program mode, and then you continue to press and release this button. We want to go to the settings menu. When we get to the settings menu, we're going to use this button over here to get to within the settings menu, we want to get to the user overload submenu. Now at the user overload submenu, you're going to press one more time and it's going, to, it's going to go to the change overload. If I click one time here, it says tear overload limit. What that's doing is literally sensing the load, total live load, that's your tooling plus your uh, load here, and it's, going to, it's just going to set your overload right at that point plus a few pounds, about 15 pounds extra force will now cause us to go over. Now, as you see here on the weight readout, 137 and a half pounds, okay? Now, when I go up and down here, I can, I can put this on the floor or I can lift it up in the air and I'm not gonna get any kind of nuisance tripping. It's not gonna give me any kind of overload fault. But if I put my hand on here and put, put about 15 pounds extra force on there, 
it'll stop lifting in the upward direction, only allow me to go down. I cannot go upward anymore because it sensed that overload. So I've just now set my overload from about 165, 170 pounds down to that 138 pound level. So now that I can't damage this core or the spindle that I might be putting it on. Now, the other way that you could do that, now say I knew the exact weight of this, of this product right out of the bat, right off the bat. And I know that this is about a 62 pound roll. I know, I know the total live load, as I said, is about 137, 138 pounds. But say I have another, uh, another roll that's gonna be a 20 pounds heavier. It's gonna be 158 pounds. What I'll do is I'm gonna go in here and show you how you can change that by doing a set number in one pound increments. And the way you do that is pretty much the same up to a certain point. It's the same as uh, doing the tear weight that we just did or the tear function. Uh, we're gonna go into program mode and I'm gonna keep clicking this until I get to my settings menu. I'm gonna go over my button under my blue light here. I'm gonna press that and release it until I get to my user overload sub menu. And then I'm gonna click that one more time and to, to get into my change overload limits. And then at this point, I'm gonna click, we clicked one time to, to, the, to, do the, to, the, uh, to do the tear function. Now I'm gonna click it two times, one, two, and then it gives me the ability to, to just ratchet down from my top end down to say 158 pounds. And then at that point, I just set it to 158 pounds. So I can do one of two things. I can, if I don't know my load weight, I can do a tear function and just set it like that, hang the load, set it, it'll automatically set to whatever my load is, plus 15 pounds, that's, that'll be my overload. Or you can do what I just did, and that is to go into this uh, uh, LCD display and set it to the exact pound that you want. So uh, those are the two ways you can do that. Okay, so wrapping up, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little bit about uh, the benefits that you get by us adding the float mode as a standard feature to all our GeForce products. Uh, once again, we'd like you to consider a, a gore bell for all your lifting and moving needs. Uh, we are a class above company and we do defy gravity in many ways and we make your life a lot easier. Uh, so we hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you uh, next time we come up with a new product. We'll be back here with another video. See you soon. Thanks.